And yet because we were born in this society, because we grew up in it, we, we accept it. We say that it seems to be correct. So cognitive dissonance explains the difference between what we believe and what the evidence tells us. Cognitive dissonance is the ability of our mind to bend itself, to sort of squeeze and squizzle. Cognitive dissonance allows unbelievable things to be believed routinely. All human beings have the, have the capacity for cognitive dissonance. We now know that belief system and rituals have no effect on weather patterns. This is a fact. We know that earthquakes and floods are caused by naturalistic forces. And yet, don't we still hope for sunny weather? If it were to rain on our wedding day, could we not take it personally? Cognitive dissonance becomes more likely the larger the ego of the individual. If the farmer wished for rain, the partiers wanted sun, well, someone's going to have to be right, someone's going to have to be wrong, right? <clears throat> Each person believes that their desire would have some effect on what would happen. Even afterwards, one side is going to feel vindicated, the other side slighted. It's all part of our human nature. Attempting to make sense out of the nonsensical, a process which is aggravated by our sort of penchant for personalizing naturalistic events. Modern societies exhibit a much more plethora, a much more high degree of cognitive dissonance. In many ways, the ability to deceive yourself increases with education, social status, and wealth. If you have a lot to lose, you're more likely to construct a mechanism that supports your own affluence. If you have very little to lose, it is more common to see the world in stark, possibly more realistic terms. So a wealthy man believes that fairness is a common occurrence. That's how he got so wealthy. Whereas the poor know that fairness does not exist. Now cognitive dissonance as it relates to health information is the purpose of this discussion. Health information is often contradictory in nature. The research and its conclusions can be difficult to decipher. So conducting research is very expensive. So most of it's funded by specific industries. These industries are interested in research conclusions that support the consumption of their products. It would be possible to find justification for consuming almost any type of product. The tendency of human beings to create their own reality combined with the tendency of industry to promote its products often leads the public to wildly inaccurate conclusions. It is therefore very important to seek out reliable informa information that can be analyzed through what we call the scientific method. Conclusions reached through careful analysis are more reliable than many of the generally accepted assumptions that our society has created. Food that tastes yummy might not be so good for us. Junk food is a boon to the food industry. Immense profits are created selling borderline poisonous foods. Why would anyone consume food that is known to be harmful to your health? Cognitive dissonance allows us to act in a way that might be inconsistent with our best interests. All human beings suffer from the tendency to justify our actions the best we can. In a similar situation with cigarette smoking, cognitive dissonance allows intelligent, caring people to continue to act in a way that may result in their own demise. It is my intention to educate my patients and the public about this phenomenon so they may use the information to free themselves from our society's version of reality. One of the most stark and major misconceptions, in my opinion, uh, example of cognitive dissonance uh, associated with with nutrition concerns the, uh, the dairy products in our uh, society. Dairy products are uh, often added to many products. You find dairy foods uh, in almost all baked goods, uh, almost all uh, processed goods, and one of the reasons for that is that dairy protein has a uh, tendency 
to increase the consumption of those products. Same is true with sugar. When sugar is added to a food, people tend to eat more of that food. And so the industry has its goals and they will uh, uh, increase in consumption and they are willing to uh, put the risk of the health of the people that purchase their products on the line in order to sell more of their products. Uh, and as long as the consumers don't have access to the type of information and the understanding of how to separate sort of quality information from more propaganda sourced information, then the public is at risk because they can't make the appropriate decisions. Conclusions based on the scientific method should be selected over those based on any other method. So these workshops are intended to provide reliable information concerning the effects of all these nutrients on the human system. So this would be sort of like nutrition as science. You know, most of us think of nutrition as a business. Most of the health problems associate, associated with nutrition are treated with the addition of supplementation. Most nutritionists make their living by selling supplements. And so supplements aren't necessarily the best way to treat disease or promote long life. As it turns out there's other much more effective ways of doing that uh, associated with nutrition. Changing the diet itself, for instance. So what I'd like to suggest is um, that we reevaluate all of the assumptions that we have. Re, uh, reevaluate the, the, the criteria for which we make future assumptions and try to instill the scientific method as much as possible.